Hey there, John Morris here with HowToMakeMyWebsite.com and in this video we're going to cover how to create an advanced form. So if in the last video we talked about how to create a basic form, a uh, form that you can easily set up and store data in a MySQL database. Um, some of the problems with that form, however, is um, every time you want to create a form, you'd have to go into your database you would have to create the fields in your database then you'd have to go back and create your HTML code um, and then you'd have to go in and edit your PHP code so every time you want to create a new form there's a lot of work uh, to be done in order to get that form to function so uh, one of the things that we can do is we can actually use PHP and write a little more co code up front and but alleviate us from having to go in and constantly edit the database, edit our code, edit you know our HTML form. In fact, what we can cut it down to is all we have to do is go in and actually write the form, and our PHP code will adjust accordingly and edit our database for us uh, based on what's in our form. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, now. Uh, I mentioned in the last video that there's a couple different ways that you could um, you can make it easier to add mul a form, you know, multiple forms to a site. And one of those ways is using object-oriented programming. And you would create a class, and then you could set some variables, and you know, for each form, just change the create a new instance of that class and change the variables, and you'd be able to uh, get your form to um, do somewhat similar to what we're doing here but uh, the reason I don't like that is one um, I guess I don't see that you necessarily need a whole class for forms um, it, the code that you're gonna see here you can write this code and it'll pretty much handle anything that you throw at it and so I guess in my mind it's just kinda overkill to go with an entire class when you really don't need it of course you could take what's here and you could turn it into a class but again I don't really see the advantage of doing that I'm sure somebody can enlighten me to what it might be but as of right now I don't see it the other big thing is, is that um, if I were to do a video on that you wouldn't necessarily learn anything really cool about PHP so I wanted to do a video uh, like this and I wanted to create a form like this because um, you're actually going to learn a lot about PHP in this video as we go through this so that's one of the big reasons why I wanted to do it as well so I thought about a different way, number of ways to approach this video um, what I've come up with is it's just best for me to dive into the code and start showing you so um, what I want to show you here is first I want to go to our database and I want to show you that we have our forms one table or uh, database here you will notice there's no tables in this database and if I click it just to make sure so you know there's no there's no tables in here I went in and I delete all the tables that we would used previously okay so uh, according to our last video since there's no tables that means there's no fields which means we wouldn't be able to submit a form to this database but I want to show you if we come back and you can see I've created a form with we have a, a text box we have a text area we have a drop down we have radio buttons we have a checkbox we have about everything that you would use in any kind of form that you might create okay so and I wanted to do one of each to show you that you can throw pretty much anything at this code and it's gonna work so if we come to this input box I'm just gonna type in some different values here we'll do value one radio one checkbox one okay so we've set all our values we've got all different kinds of form elements and we're gonna hit submit and you notice it says our information was submitted successfully so we didn't get any kind of error if we come back over to our database and you can see now we have this table here called form 2 that we didn't have previously and if we browse to that you'll see we have a record here and we have our ID of 1 because it's our first one we have our timestamp our IP our form ID which is form 2 and then you can see over here we have our values we have this is the input this is the text area value one radio one checkbox one and those are the exact values that I entered in so how did we go from not having a table created at all um, not having any input input fields to when we submit the form we automatically have a table created 
We have all the necessary input fields created and we have all the values inserted correctly. Now, if you think about that, that's a pretty powerful uh, little script because you can come back to this form and you could enter pretty much anything. You could create a new uh, text box. You could have a hundred different values here or a hundred different elements here and you throw it at the script and it's going to automatically create it and store it all for you. So you don't have to go in and edit the database and you don't have to go in and edit your PHP code. All you have to do is write your form how you want it to show up and the the database and the table will uh, and the code will adjust automatically. So just to show you that, I'm actually going to come over here and let's go ahead and add in another input. Okay, so we'll call this input two and we'll give it the name of input two. Okay, we'll save that. And we come over here and we refresh our form. Then you can see now we have input one, input two. And so we'll just go ahead and put input one. Value one, radio one, checkbox one, submit. And then we head back over to our database refresh that and now you can see we have a new field called input 2 and we have our value in there this is input 2 so the value of this is that again you don't have to edit any code you don't have to edit your database all you have to do is come in and code your form how you want it to be point it to the processing PHP script just like before and the the PHP will actually do all of the heavy lifting for you all right so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you through that code show you what I did um, show you how it works you're gonna learn a lot about PHP um, some different functions and things like that so um, let's go ahead and dive right into that okay so the first thing you'll notice is I have a number of files here that actually bring this all together so first off we have our form file here and actually you don't need any PHP up here as I have all that PHP that's up here does is allow the uh, this message your information was submitted successfully to appear so you don't actually need that up there um, just provides a nice little message there so um, your form is actually going to be all in HTML you could actually save it as uh, form.php or form.html or whatever so it doesn't really matter um, if you, of course, if you want to put this message in here in PHP, then you'll have to save it as a PHP file. But so we have this page. We have our config page, which lists uh, or defines um, our login information for our database. And of course, in this config file, you could put a number of other things too if you wanted to define some base settings for your forms. Um, but in here, we just have database settings. We have a functions file. And what this functions file does is it contains just all of our functions that we use um, throughout our actual process script, which is right here. So um, this is something that I, I highly, highly recommend. It's kind of an object-oriented programming principle where we come here and we create functions to do certain things for us instead of having all this code over here. So as you can see, our actual process script is pretty simple. It's about you know 81 lines of code. So it's really not that complex, but it calls these functions over here into it. So the you know that's another 109 uh, lines of code that aren't over here, and it allows you to use uh, these functions for multiple purposes. And you're going to see exactly what I'm talking about when we get in. Uh, into the code a little bit further. So we have our functions file to define, you know, our base functions we use. Then we have our actual process script. And this is where uh, kind of the core of the script where everything happens that we uh, want to happen. So um, let's go ahead and take a look at this config file first. Um, what the config file does is it actually just defines a number of what are called PHP constants. And so 
why would we want to use PHP constants? Well, the reason is, is something that's called scope in PHP, and it's something that, um, you know, if you read a manual or something like that, they're going to talk about scope, okay? And um, constants help us deal with scope in an easy way. So what is scope? Well, as you saw in our functions file, we have a number of functions. And if you write a function, and let's say like this, and you declare a variable inside of it, just like this, this variable will only be valid inside of this function. So if I were to come outside this function and say echo variable, it wouldn't do anything because this variable is, is declared inside this function and won't work outside of it unless we do some things for it to. And I'll talk about that here in a minute. And it works the other way as well. Let's say we define a variable out here and we want to try and echo it inside our function, that's not going to work. It won't happen. And so that's when we talk about scope, what inside the function is called local scope. Okay, it's local to that function. It only works inside that function. Outside is called global scope because it has, you know, you could write multiple functions and this, um, this variable is outside all those, so it has a global scope. So in order to use this function in or this variable inside of these uh, functions, we have to declare it as global. So we'd have to do something like this. Global variable, okay? Now, what that'll do is we will use the global version in this function, we will use the global version for this variable. Okay, so it'll pull this global version and use that and now this will echo out this up here, okay? All right, so that's that's scope, right? Now, we don't necessarily need to you know, know a whole lot about that except that constants are a way of dealing with scope. When you um, define a constant, a, de a constant basically automatically has global scope. So you don't have to do this global variable right here. You can just, see we've defined this constant of db name. Now if we want to echo the actual value, which is forms one, we can just do db name and it will automatically, because it's a constant, it will automatically just use this one, uh, this value up here, okay? So that just helps us simplify our code when we're writing code. Um, and keeps us from having to, to write that extra global variable in there. So you want to do this with variables that you're going to use throughout multiple functions. Okay, so um, typically database information is going to be something you'll use throughout multiple functions. So typically you'll de define that as a constant. Okay, so that's all we've done here. And so when you create a database in um, PHP MyAdmin or, or wherever you create it, it'll typically have a name. It'll have a user that is able to access that database, and that user will have a username and a user password. And of course, you'll have your host, which will typically be local host. You have your character set and your collation. Now, typically, your character set and your collation, you know, it's going to be UTF-8 and your collate. You don't collation. You don't really necessarily have to worry about the defaults. Will typically work. You may have a setup where that's not the case. So. Um, you know, you may want to define those here or whatever uh, and use those in your code. Um, but typically the big things you're going to need is your name, uh, the database name, username, password, and the host. Okay. All right. So that's our config file. Now, if you, we come over here and notice that we do this require once config um, PHP file. So what that is doing is it, it's kind of like we talked about includes in web design 101. That's actually require is a little bit different in that instead of it really it deals with the way um, PHP handles it if that file doesn't exist so if you use include and the file that you include doesn't exist PHP will just throw a warning but it'll continue to execute the script 
If you use require, it will actually terminate the script. And that's simply because you're telling PHP when you use require that this, that this script here requires this one here, okay? So that's all we're really doing is we're requiring our config file because we're gonna use those constants throughout. And in fact, you'll notice we have those constants right here that we're using, okay? So um, that's what we're doing here with this require. All right, so we have that. Um, then we have our functions, and we're just gonna talk about these functions as we come to them in our script. So the next thing that we're gonna really dive into is this script. So we require our config file, we require our functions file, which has all our kind of base functions that we're gonna use. Now, I put some notes in here to kind of show you or to explain what each of these different parts do. So um, the first thing that we actually do here is we check to see if this form was submitted on this installed domain. So this is kind of a security check. So we don't want someone to um, create a form, put it on their website, and then pass that information to our um, process script on our server and put information into our database. And so if you don't run this tr check, then that's possible for someone to do. So all this check does is it makes checks to make sure that the form um, that was submitted was submitted from the domain that this script is installed on. Now, of course, you could come in here and you could edit this. You could add other domains if you have, maybe you want to install the script on one domain, submit forms through it, and so on. Um, but this is, so you could just come in here and you could add domains or to it, but this allows you to whitelist domains that are allowed to submit this form. So it's really just a security check. And, and so we, we get the domain of our server, we get the domain of the referring, which is the form, we get the domain of the referring form, and then we check to make sure they match. And if they don't, then you see down here, we just kill the script. And if they do match, then we have to go ahead and continue processing the script, all right? So um, the next thing we do, and the first thing you're always gonna have to do is you're gonna have to link to the database. So you have to open a connection to the data, database. So you see here, it says open a connection to our database using the info from the config file. So we've created a variable that has houses this function f sql connect and it has this information the username password and the database name so if we go to our functions file we can see we have down here this f sql connect and this is where we define what the function does and it takes the username password and database variable and then we run a couple of functions so we have our mysql connect which is this is how you connect to a database in php so, and in that you have to pass in the, you know, the local host, the username, and the password, okay? That creates a connection essentially to the computer that stores, uh, that houses the database, right? And then we create an er uh, error check. So we stored it in a variable, uh, um, the connection in a variable, and then we check to see if that, that uh, variable or that connection is, is active. If it's not, then we kill the script and uh, return an error. Then, uh, and this is kind of just like before, you've seen this before in the last video, okay? So this should look familiar. The difference is, is we put it into a function, okay? Um, we have our database, this selects the database that we want to use, um, which we defined in our config file as forms one. Um, so we select that database. Um, here's the database, it's the, again, it's passed from our config file. Again, we put in our error check, okay? So this is just the exact same code that we used in our previous video to create a simple connection. The difference is we put it into a function. And so now, all we have to do is call that function in our script right here instead of laying all that, out all that code here. And the value of that is, is if you wanna make another connection, because you can make multiple connections to the database at one time, or let's say you want to change this code a little bit and you, need, you wanna, um, create a different connection or, or, or something along those lines, all you have to do is, is change this and change this information in here and it will connect to that database for you. So you can reuse this function over and over and over again without having to continually write this code. Just by writing it once and then uh, using it inside your, your code here, calling it inside your code here. So that's the value of this, this functions file, okay? All right, so we connect to our 
uh, database. We select our or our host. We could select our database, and now we're we're close to set to be able to start adding stuff. So the next thing we do is we see we have our post variable. If you remember from our last the last video, this is when the form gets submitted, everything gets stored into a post variable that we can then use PHP to to parse out and store in the database. Well, one of the things that we want to do is we actually want to clean that information because again, you, you never want to trust user submitted data. So we want to uh, essentially escape all that data so that if there's any characters in that data that are questionable and could be used for uh, SQL injection attacks or whatever, then we want to clean those or escape those so that they don't harm our database. Okay, so that's what this fclean uh, function does here. If you come over here, I believe, yeah, it's right here. We have this fclean function. So essentially, you notice this MySQL real escape string. This is a function that will escape uh, your data for you. It's created by PHP specifically for SQL injection tax. Um, and so it basically makes any malicious code harmless. So uh, instead of that code being stored in your database and executing, it'll still be stored in your database, but it'll be stored in your database in a way where it doesn't execute. It just actually stores the raw value itself, not actually executing it. So um, this is, again, this cleaning function that allows you to clean that post data. Um, and so what I did is I just cleaned the entire variable so that we don't have to we don't have to parse out and clean clean each individual variable. So, all right, I I I guess it's an I should say array. I clean the entire array so I don't have to uh, parse out and clean each variable. So we just clean the array. That way our data has now been rendered safe. And again, in the next video we're going to talk about security, and this is going to be um, one of the things that we talk about, or one of the philosophies that we talk about. I mentioned whitelisting earlier with the domain. Um, we also, uh, you know, we have, there's, there's format correction, um, which is kind of what this is, is where, you know, if someone's trying to insert a, uh, malicious format code that's malicious, formatted maliciously, and we just correct that format so it's no longer malicious, okay? So there's some other philosophies we're going to talk about in the next video, but this is one way of doing, actually, you know, this is a, a real live way of doing that, is cleaning that, um. And again, this array map is just a function that you know that allows you to uh, apply this function to the entire array and all the variables in it. So um, again, that my SQL real escape string is really what does the actual um, cleaning of, of the information. So all right. So the next thing we do is we set our um, main variables. Okay. So the first thing that we want to set is the table. Now you notice when I first started this uh, tutorial or this video that we didn't have a table created. And when I submitted the form, then the table got automatically created. Okay. So we have to, we, we grab that table, the name for that table where we get that is this form ID, ID right here. Okay. So we pass a hidden value. See, it says hidden. We pass a hidden value in the form. And if you're going to use this script, you always need to have this in here. This input, this hidden, this form ID, and then give it a name. And then you see it says form2. And if we go over here, you'll notice that our table is form2. So if I were to come in here and I were to change this to table1 or whatever, that would automatically create a table called table1. And this is every time you create a new form with this script, you're typically going to want to change this value so each form gets submitted to its own table. And that way, if you want to draw data from it, you can draw data from uh, a specific table as opposed to having all your data stored into one place. So you'll always want to change this. Okay, well, again, we set that variable up in the PHP code right here. Again, we use our now cleaned post data and grab the form ID. And if we go back over here, you notice the name was form ID. So the way that the the, the form data gets gets posted or, or gets uh, passed in our variable is you'll have an array. And so you'll have an array that looks like this. 
and you're going to have key value pairs, okay? And there's something PHP, get used to the terms array and key value pairs because pretty much everything you're going to do is a key value pair. So an array is really just a list of information. And you have a key, which kind of names the, the type of data it is, and then you have your value, which is the actual value. So in this case, um, we have our form ID, which is our key, all right? That's the type of value it is. So form ID, and then our value, the actual name of that form is form two, okay? So that's the key value pair. That's why it's important that every one of these, you'll notice every one of these has a name because that's the name is used as the key throughout and that those keys, those names get passed to create these fields right here. So if you leave it blank, you'll end up with a blank uh, uh, field here and you won't be able to call it and actually you'll probably generate a script or a f uh, error in the script. But um, so again, the, the, the form data gets passed as an array with key value pairs. The name of this input is passed as each key and then the value is passed. So for our input one, then the key value pair would be the name is input. And then the value is whatever, whatever value that you enter into um, that this right here. Whatever value you enter in here, that's the value, okay? So that's how that works. So if we go back to our code here, then we grab, we're, we're storing the value of form ID, of the key form ID, which again is form two. We're storing that as this table variable, okay? All right, so why I went through all that, because the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna store all of our keys, okay? So first off, what we have is, we, you notice we have our post array right here. Again, has all of the data from the form stored in an array. What we do is we parse out the array keys. So we just grab the array keys, right? So uh, if we go back to our form, we grab form ID, redirect to, input, input to, text area. All the names, drop down, radio, checkbox, right? All those names are what the keys are. So we just grab those keys because we want to create a list of just the keys. You'll see why here in just a sec. So we grab those just the keys and then we do what's called an implode. So what an implode does is it takes an array and and, and um, formats it according to or, or parses it out according to how you specify. So you notice we have this um, this little comma and a space here. What that allows us to do is instead of our now our, our data being stored as an array just as I drew like this in key value pairs what it does is it turns it into just a string, okay, with a list. And so it would be um, form ID, comma, space, because that's what we told it to insert between each, each one, each key. The next one would be redirect to, comma, space, input one, comma, space, input two, comma, space, okay. So the array key allows you to create a string, all right? And the reason we do that is because when we go to create our SQL statements down here to create our fields automatically, we need it in string format just like this because that's what MySQL requires, okay? It won't take this array like this. Uh, well, it will, it will take arrays, but it won't work the way we want it to work, okay? So we need to put it into a string. So we put all the keys into a string, and then you notice we do the exact same thing down here with the values. Put all those into a string. So now we have our all our keys in a string and all our values in a string, okay? And they're stored as they get input. So, or as they get passed from the form. So they'll, they'll be in, when you put them into these strings, you know, the first one, will the first key will match the first value, second key will match the second value. So you don't have to worry about them getting get arranged. All right, so that kind of sets us up with our main variables to insert data into our database. All right. Now we have, um, we set up some stuff for our redirect, okay? So you notice that 
Over here we have this redirect, and I haven't set a value for it, so I left it blank. Okay. Over here we have this redirect, and we set our the value of redirect to what was submitted in this form to this right here. Okay. So if I put something in here, then now this variable would be http www.google.com. Okay. And that's what we get stored in our database and used later on when we go to actually do our redirect. Okay. The other thing we did is it said, well, someone might not put this in here. They might leave it blank just like I did. So how are we going to handle it if it's left blank? So what we what I did is we use this referred. So we basically grab the um, the URL of the page that referred or that was submitted to this script, which is our form.php page, because this is again this this form sends this information to this process.php. So we grab that URL of this form.php, um, and then we create uh, essentially what this does is this parse query is um, if you'll let's see. You'll notice we have this message equals one on the end here. Um, what this code does is essentially handle that. If you submit this, if I didn't have this, uh, this these two lines in here, you'll notice we have referred and then we do query and then we go back to referred. Basically what that means is we're starting with this, we're doing something to it, and then we're storing it back as this variable. And you'll notice we do the string replace function. What that does is, what we did is we grab the query just the query part of the URL, which the query part of the URL is everything after this question mark. Okay, so this message equals one is the query, All right? And we grab that, store it as a variable, then we do a string replace with the question mark and the query and uh, on this variable right here. So what that does is essentially when the form gets submitted, if you're on this page right here, like for example, again, you can go to form.php, and then when you submit it uh, successfully, you'll be redirected to message equals one with the query on the end. It's the same page, but it has a query on the end. If I were to not put this code in here, and I were to submit this form from where it says message equals one like this, it would add another question mark message equals one on the end of it. And then this right here, it would cause an error with that and it would no longer show. Okay, so it's something really simple, small, but it allows me to, all I did is is when a form is submitted, I check to see if there's that query part on the end and if it is, I strip it off so that it doesn't have a second one added onto it again. Okay, so that's all I really did with that. Um, all right, next we have extra data fields that we'll collect on form submission, okay? So the two extra data fields are the timestamp and the IP. So if we go to our database here, you notice that we do timestamp and IP, and then we go into all the ones that are from the form. So these are essentially just, if you have fields that you want to have added to the database that aren't a part of the form, you just want to have them always added there, like the timestamp and the IP address for whatever reason, you can add those here. So if you want to add another one, you would just kind of go like this, and you might do something like date. Or whatever okay so and then that's the fields remember how we again we did the keys which are going to ultimately be our fields and then we did the values up here well we're doing the same thing down here we have our fields and we have our values so these are the fields and then we're creating the actual value so the value for timestamp is the time right so we just grab the time and then the IP is this F get IP function that we have over here now uh, I'm not going to go super deep into what this function does simply because uh, it's it's kind of extraneous to me. Um, it, it, yeah, it's cool and it does, you know, it, it, it's neat, but um, it's not really essential to what we're doing. Um, so, but essentially what you'll notice that we have this fget IP down here. And what it does is it's you can you can the way you get the IP address is you have all these different ways a client IP forwarder you have all these different things and what these two functions do in conjunction is they check to see if the IP 
that is being passed because you know hackers can you can spoof IPs and and different things like that. So it just tries to check to see if the IP that's being passed is a valid IP, um, and then if it is, if like the IP they get from the client IP seems like it's spoofed, then it'll use a different one and it, it'll go through and any time it see, sees feels like the one IP it's getting is, is spoofed, it'll try a different method of getting it until it finds a method that uh, doesn't feel like is uh, the IP is being spoofed, okay? So that's really all this does. It's a really, really fancy way of getting the IP address, okay? to again store in our database and if we come back over here you'll see we have this IP field the reason I say zero is because I'm using a local server uh, so there really is no IP so it says zero um, but when you put this on a live server it will actually have um, an IP address in there okay so that's the value for our IP alright so now we're kinda getting into we've set up our variables we've done some of our security checks we've cleaned our information we're, we've added any extra fields we want to add now we're at the point where we can actually start adding stuff to the database so again you remember we created our link to our host and selected our database using this function up here now we come down here and we sit, we do this check we check to see if the table exists and if it doesn't we create it this is how you cannot have a table in your database, submit the form, and then the table will be automatically created because we check to see if a table named whatever value you put in here exists. And if it does, we just submit the information to it as it is. And if it doesn't, then we create the table. All right, so we run this function called F table exists. So if we come over to our functions, you can see we have this F table exists function and we pass in the table name and we pass in the the database or we can use the one that's already selected in this case you'll notice that we use the uh, we pass in the one that we identified granted we could have just left this blank because we would and then it would just use the one we already selected up here but we just explicitly defined it so it does that and then um, it checks to see if first it checks to see about the database um, and then uh, if the database exists then we come down here and it, it does a query and what it does is it just essentially queries the information schema so if we come back over to our database you'll notice that one of the things we have here is this information schema okay give it a second here to, to bring this up and when this comes up, you'll notice that we have a list of different, um, the structure, different things that are, this is kind of applies to the entire database and all the tables in it. And you'll notice one of them is this tables. Okay, if we browse the tables, then you'll notice that we have all these different things down here. And one of the things we have is we have this table now in the Forms 1 database called Form 2. Okay, so essentially what um, the script the this does is it checks the information schema and the tables to see if our table exists okay so that's really all it does and if the table then if the table exists it returns true and if the table doesn't exist it returns false okay so then we can come back over here and we can essentially do an if statement right if the table exists and actually we're saying if the table doesn't exist, when we put this uh, exclamation point in, inside it, does the opposite. So if the table doesn't exist, then we create an SQL statement called create table, right? And we give it the table name and we pass in, okay, we have the, our ID that we always want to add. It's our primary key. Then we add in our timestamp field. We add in our IP field because those are the ones, remember, from up here that we want to have automatically created. Okay, so we do that, and then again, uh, we have we we store it into a variable so we can test it. So result equals my SQL query, which runs the. This is what actually runs the query. So this is a statement just setting it up, setting up the query. This actually runs the query, and then we store it into a variable so we can come down here and again check it, and if um, the operation 
completed successfully, then, uh, or if it doesn't complete successfully, then we kill the script, say invalid query, and we return the MySQL error, okay? So this is what creates the table if it doesn't exist. So we use the function to check if the table exists. If it does, we just leave it alone. If, we, if it doesn't, then we create it, okay? Now, when we come down here, so now we've got our table, whether it was there before or not, we've got a table. Now we come down here to check and see if the, the fields specified in the form exist and if they don't create them. Because you remember, our fields get created automatically as well, and we didn't add them up here. We only added our timestamp and our IP field and our ID field, okay? Created the table, added these three fields that we know are always going to be there. And then we come down here, and um, we're going to check now to see if the fields exist. All right, so we run a for each statement, okay? And our, we run it on our array, our post array, okay? And we, we, we set them into key value pairs. So this is essentially parsing out our array, okay? And so we create this variable, MySQL real escape string key, all right? So it cleans the key um, variable, and we store it as this column variable, okay? And then uh, we come down here, and for our alter, what this is is it's a variable that we can test later. And this is our check again to see if the fields exist. So we have this function f the field exists, the table, the column, and the column attributes. Okay. If we go back over to our functions, we have this function f field exists, table, column, column attributes. All right. So. Uh, First off, we set the variable as exists, exists equals false. Okay, so we're going to say by default the field doesn't exist. Then uh, we do a run an SQL query to show the columns from the table, so to grab the columns from the table that we created. Okay, um, when it's blank, then there's not going to be any in there, so this will return uh, essentially an array of nothing. And then that returns this into an array. And we use a while loop through that array um, to, to do uh, associations and see if the columns that we've specified in our post array exist in our table. And if they do, then we return true. Um, and if they don't, if it, if it exists equals false, then we come down here, we run a query that alters the table and it adds the column with the column attributes, okay? So that allows us to check if the field exists and if the field don't exist to create them, okay? And again, this is the, the function that does that. All right, so we check that, we run through that function to see if the fields that we wanna add exist. Again, using our post array here, which is the information passed from the form. And if they don't exist, we create them. If they do exist, again, we leave them alone, all right? And then we do a check to see, okay, um, if the alter six, if the uh, altering the table function failed, then we want to say unable to add column. Let know what column uh, was unable to be added. Okay, so uh, that's how we again check to see if the fields exist and if they don't add them. Now, finally, we've got our table created. We've got our fields created. Now we can actually insert data into them. And so inserting data is actually really easy. You saw this in the last video. Um, so we create an SQL statement, insert into the table name, which is up here, table. So this form ID, the value, which is form two. And so we insert into this table, the keys, and again, remember, keys from up here, we put them into a string. So now it's just gonna display them out, just like I showed you earlier. And then X fields, which are the extra fields that we wanna add of timestamp and IP. So we're gonna insert into those. And then these are the values we're gonna insert. We're gonna insert our values that we have that we've put into a string. And again, our X values that we uh, created up here. And we're gonna insert those. Okay, now you remember before we actually typed all this out in here. Here, we're generating it dynamically based off of what's submitted in the form and passing it into our SQL statement. 
And then again, we're doing this MySQL uh, query off of this. And we're running our check to see if it uh, works or not. And then that inserts the actual data in. And then again, if it's successful, we move on. We close our connection just like before. And then we have this little redirect uh, thing down here. So the way this, what we want to do is once we've submitted all this data and it's been added to the database, no errors, then we want to redirect um, the person who submitted the form wherever we want them to go. So there's two ways of doing that. One is you specify that value right here. So you specify the URL that you want someone to go to after they submit the form. Obviously that'd be a some sort of thank you page on your site or whatever. Okay, so you would specify that here. If you, okay, so that's the first way. And if you, um, if you do that, then this is a function that checks to see if this redirect uh, variable up here is blank. Okay, and the only way it would be blank is if you left it blank here. Okay, so if it's not blank, that's what this not empty means. If that variable is not blank, then we do a header redirect to the value that was entered in this variable and we append this little query to the end. Okay, and that query is what makes uh, this little message show up. Okay, all right, so um, we do that. If the uh, redirect, if this variable up here is empty, then you'll notice we do a header redirect to this referred variable with the appended query. And that referred variable, if you remember from before, is the one we got when we um, when we got the, grabbed the form refer or the referring page up here, parse it out, and did everything we did. That's this variable right here, and that's a URL of the page that referred um, this form to, or the data to this script, okay? And we again append our uh, query at the end, okay? So that is what handles our redirect. And then of course this was, again, we did our uh, matching domains. This is to check to see if the form was submitted from the same domain. And if it was, we did all this stuff in here. And if it wasn't, then we kill the script and say you're not allowed to submit data to this form. So that's what that is down there. That's just the rest of that uh, if else statement. Okay, so now with our form set up this way, what happens is, if you'll notice, we start off on form.php, we insert some stuff. Radio one, radio one, checkbox one. We submit some stuff and we get redirected to form.php message equals one. Okay, so that's uh, that's what the default does in terms of the redirect. Now, if we were to come into our form and we were to say, let's go to http www.yahoo.com and we save this, we come back here. Oops, and we refresh, and we do again, blah, 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 blah. You notice it redirects us to Yahoo now, okay? So uh, that's how that works. And so essentially what this means is now with this script, you can come in here and you can create a form however you want and you can create whatever input elements you want to create and send it to this script here and this script will handle it. It'll create the table it needs to create, it'll create the fields it needs to create, and it'll store all the data it needs to store. Um, and so essentially the way you can use this is you can, um, you can create a form, like say you want to create a contact form and then you want to create a quote form and then you want to you know, create an application form or, or whatever, each one of those three forms, all you'd have to do in, is come in here and lay out your actual form, how you want it uh, to work. And when you submit it, you don't have to do anything with the database. You just have to create the database and set the information in here. When you submit that form the first time, it'll automatically create everything that you need to create using the PHP. Uh, and it'll store that, that information. So 
that's 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 very very powerful and it allows you to then all you got to do is change this part right here remember this form ID is what um, creates the table and gives it the table name so for your uh, contact you might say contact call it contact then for your quote you might call it quote then for your application you might call it application and when you do that each form will submit to a different or create and submit to a different table and it'll have the fields that you've specified in there so um, let's go ahead and change this to contact let's save it and we go back and we refresh Let's go ahead and submit. And we get redirected to Yahoo. And if we come back, we go to databases and we go to forms one. You notice that now we have a new table called contact. If we click on that, you see we have our first record in there. So that's what it allows you to do. That's incredibly powerful. Now, uh, I will say that this isn't necessarily um, an end-all, be-all script. Okay, there's probably things that you could add to it. Uh, probably some, definitely some more security checks uh, that you might be able to think of. Um, you know, maybe some more functionality. But this, what this gives you is a good base or a good core. We talked about in the first video that everything is a form and that you know, when you're creating a, a website for today, you're going to probably be using lots and lots of forms. The power of this is that it makes doing that very easy. So all you have to do is actually just write the form in HTML, which you can see is uh, there's actually seven lines of PHP up here that you don't necessarily need. So it's about 20 to 25 lines of code to create your form. Granted, you create a bigger form, there'll be more lines of code, but all you're doing is creating the form. You're not messing with creating a database. You're not messing with writing PHP code. It's all done for you. All you got to do is create the form. So if you need to add a form to your site, it's really easy. And if you need to add 100 forms to your site, you'll be able to do it this way a lot faster than you would having to create all the database, uh, data, or create the tables, create the fields, write the code, and then come write the form. Uh, so very 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 powerful way of doing it and of course for you it's a great education in uh, PHP and, and some of the things that you can do with PHP so um, well, that's that's pretty much it um, for this video uh, really the down and dirty part of of creating a form and getting into the PHP obviously um, you know if you're new to PHP and never done it before you may want to do the uh, beginners way or the basic way that we did in the last video you may want to do it that way a couple times till you get a kind of a feel of how it all works and then uh, when you feel comfortable with that go ahead and, and work on creating something like this of course this script is going to be available to you um, inside uh, you know as a part of this course so you have the script so really you don't necessarily need to write the code but obviously it's good practice for you if you want to so um, and of course definitely you want to look at this uh, uh, you know, adding your own flair into the script and different things and, you know, looking at the security and adding some stuff there. And we're going to talk about that in the next video as well. So um, one thing I want to say about this script is, is it is a dev script, meaning you'll notice there's no fancy graphical interface. That might be something that you want to add. Um, but I, I tend to release all these things as, as dev script because you're here to learn code. So you're not here to learn how to use a graphical interface. Anybody can do that. Um, you're a coder. You're here to learn code. So um, I, I created it in such a way where you have to write code in order to use it. And of course, in this case, it's the HTML code. Now, when you feel comfortable, you can get into writing the PHP as well. But so it's a dev script. Um, it's released as is. There's no warranties. Uh, you know, if you put it on your site and something happens. You know, come back and try and blame me. Um, just know that you know it's it's released for your use, but you need to be smart about how you use it. You need to you know check into the security and um, you know see if there's anything you feel like you need to add um, and, and use it at your own risk. Okay, so um, that's kind of my disclaimer for for the code or the script that you're getting with this course. So. Um, 
yep, that's that. In the next video, we're going to talk about security. So let's get into it.